Hey guys, Big Rad 3, Dennis here again, still wearing his band um, from the hospital. Yeah, I got my tonsils and my adenoids removed, and I obviously don't have my proper voice. I've been having a stuffy nose, a bad throat, with blood out of my nose. I'm just going to do this very quickly because people want it to happen, so I'm going to make it happen. And then I'm not going to do anything else. Although I did finish Clash of the Contenders and Survival of the Fist. I'll probably review that tomorrow if I'm feeling better. But this will be very quick before I get this over with. I'm going to see Boiling Point soon as well. Okay, let's just get this over with. Okay, uh, number 10. Uh, number 10 is Kurt Angle versus Desmond Wolf at Turning Point. What can you say? I just talked about this match recently. Desmond Wolf's debut. Possibly the best pay-per-view debut ever in professional wrestling that I've ever seen. Uh, this was excellent and uh, really showed why Desmond Wolf belongs in TNA. He didn't appear on much of the spoilers, which is not a good thing. Okay, let's get Brian Danielson versus Chris Hero at Garris and Funk Dennis. Originally, I had their Final Countdown Tour date match, but this match was just so much better. I actually switched places with it because I thought the turning point match was better than this, than the date match. This was very, very good. 45 minutes. <coughs> Of excellent, excellent, excellent action on PWG Show of the Year. One of the best shows this year, in my opinion. This was excellent, excellent. Go check this match out. Daniel wins the title, which a lot of people didn't like. I thought it was actually pretty good, though. Next, you get the most underrated Ring of Honor match of the year. Nigel McGinnis versus Kenta at the 7th Anniversary Show. I thought this was excellent. Nigel hits Kenta with the GTS, which made me mark out like a little bitch. And... Yeah, all the London Dungeon submissions, all the kicks get to get through and Nigel's biceps. Remember, Nigel had two torn biceps in this match. This is much excellent. Next, we get TNA's match of the year. Joe Daniels and AJ at turning point. This was amazing. Uh, really good. Some people actually think I might be underrating it. I thought it was really, really good. But I didn't think it was great. I still think the first one's better, obviously. But this was still excellent. This had more storytelling, I will admit. Just not, not as much athleticism. I, I think if Joe was in better shape, this match could have been even better than what it actually was. But still excellent. Next we get the Dragon Gate second best match of the year. The Young Bucks versus Sima and Yokosuka. And Enter the Dragon. This was amazing. Four and a half stars. So just excellent, excellent spots. Amazing action in this match. Don't remember it too much to be honest. I saw the match months ago, but this was amazing. I just remember marking out like a bitch with Jared on Skype. Was it Jerry? No, with, with Daniel. They joined on Skype. Go see this match. Next, you get ROH's second best match of the year. Uh, Danielson and Black versus the Wolves at uh, Double Feature 2. Uh, this is the best tag team match of the year, in my opinion. 45 minute, a 45 minute draw. That was just excellent, 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 excellent wrestling. Glad the Wolves won. This really put the Wolves over, in my opinion. Uh, made the Wolves like a serious, serious, serious team in Ring of Honor, like a big time team. Even though they didn't beat Daniels to the Black, but this was still amazing. Uh, my uh, the best American Wolves match this year, the best, not the best Davy Richards match, or the best Danielson match for that matter, but still excellent, excellent stuff. Go check this match out. Next, you get the Noah match of the year, Kenta versus Nakajima. I've seen this match like five times. At first, I gave it four and a quarter, then I gave it four and a half, then back to four and a quarter, then back to four and a half, and then four and three quarter. After watching it so many times, I actually appreciated it for what it was, how big this match was in Japan at the moment. This is Kenta's match of the year, which says a lot, which says a lot, a lot. So, yeah, you have to check this match out. This is just amazing, amazing. This, these guys, literally, I think these guys broke into each other's skin. The kicks they did were just amazing. I, I marked out like a bitch the, like, the third or fourth time I saw this match. I kept watching, I just kept marking out for all the kicks. The kicks are absolutely phenomenal. Please go check this match out. Trust me. Appreciate it for what it was. It's an excellent technical wrestling match. Next we have ROH's match of the year. Danielson versus McGinnis at Glory Bonder 8. Wow. You know, just this match and the segments and the speeches afterwards made this made this match so special. In my opinion, it's their best or second best match they've ever had. I think this, this is almost as good as their unified match. Not quite there, though. Uh, but this is just... Excellent, because I think that unified match really just like cemented Nigel as a, as a holy shit guy in Ring of Honor. But this was still, you know, this still had equal importance. The two biggest guys leaving the company. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, on the best rest professional wrestling show I've seen this year. It's better than the Dragon Gate pay-per-views. It's better than Garrison from Theaters. It's better than Turning Point. It's the best best show I've seen this year. 
So yeah, go buy Glory Bonnery, the final countdown, and go watch this match. This match is amazing. Let's get the, the Dragon Heat USA match of the year. Davey versus Shingo. I get a lot of shit for giving this match five stars. I still stand by that rating. I thought it was that phenomenal. I, I could not, I've never, I could not stop marking out so hard. This was just wow. Not to copy Honor Hammer or whatever. Every time she's a good match, it goes, but this was just woo. But I'm going to say it. This match was just wow. <laughs> non stop mark out moments from this match. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, really, really liked the match a lot, a lot. Uh, go, go check this match out. I know some of you guys don't think it's five stars. I do. That's just my opinion. Uh, I really liked it that much. I just could not stop yelling at my computer during this match. I was so worn out that during the Young Books match, like the first 10 minutes of it, I was just out. I was dead tired. But I still I still gave that match four stars. I still rewatched that match. But this match is still excellent. Best Dragon Game match I've seen this year. Best Davy Richards match I've seen this year, which also says a lot. Number one, of course, Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. It's not even a contest. No match ever comes close. Like Dave Meltzer said it best. This is probably, he said in March, this will most likely be the match of the year. Even if there is a better t wrestling match this year, which there might not be, but even if there is a better wrestling match this year, purely for the stage that it took place, the presence of both the workers, the history behind the, wor the workers, will make this match the match of the year. And he was 100% right. This is the best match I've seen. Possibly of the decade. Not, not sure on that yet. Best WWE match I've seen this decade. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much. I marked out so, so hard. I was. This is when I marked out. When I was yelling that I was just knocked out. And I was just like staring at my screen. Like with no brain activity. But you know, realizing whatever was happening. Go check this match out. The best professional wrestling match of 2009. I know Aries versus Richards. Uh, I have ordered that DVD by the way. When I see that. I don't, I don't think that match can top this purely because of the stage this took place. Meltzer can give that match five stars. I think it's still good this match the match of the year. Whatever. Excellent. The best professional wrestling match I've seen last year. I think there's no contest. I don't think anything ever comes close. Go check this match out. I have four minutes, so I'm going to try to finish off. Clash of the Contenders. and Spiral of the Fittest. Overall, I thought they're both a little underrated, especially Spiral of the Fittest. I think that show gets way too much shit, but let's go to Clash of the Contenders. Kevin Steve Strong, strong, three and a half. Excellent opener. One of the best Ring of Honor openers I've seen all year. Miss Jefferson and Nicole Matthews. Too many people crap on this match, giving it two stars. I thought it was decent. Uh, the Four Quarter Survival. I thought this was hilarious, to be honest. I thought this was really, really funny to watch. People don't treat this as the comedy match that it should be. Claudia wins again. He won like five one quarter survivals last year or something like that. Funny matches. Very, very funny match. Go check the match out. The Briscoes versus the House of Truth. Three and a quarter stars. Really enjoyed it. I really love the House of Truth. This this really put them over as a tag team, even though they didn't win. That's why I got a little random around the finish, but this was still excellent, excellent match. Davey Kenny. I saw the second half of the show with my dad actually. He never seen a Ring of Honor show before. We both thought this match was amazing. I gave it four and a quarter stars, as everyone else does. I do think Kenny deserved more offense. I think if you're going to have Kenny, he'll go over. He, he needs to have more offense. They give Davey so much offense that the crowd was super behind Davey Richards because of it. Next, we get the Young Bucks versus Titus and King. Eh, I thought this match was okay. Second worst match of the night, in my opinion. Two and a half stars. Didn't really enjoy it that much. Could have been a lot better. I don't know. The crowd was kind of dead for it. Next, we get Tyler Black versus Chris Hero. I really enjoyed this match. Under my dad. Three and a quarter stars. Uh, he even agrees with me. Chris Hero does the elbow way too much. I mean, it makes the move seem unbelievable and unrealistic. He needs to stop doing the elbow every five minutes in a match. It's kind of ridiculous. Three and a quarter stars, though. I think it was a, an enjoyable match. Definitely not boring. Very fun to watch. Next, we get Aries Delirious. I haven't seen Boiling Point yet, but up to now, this is Delirious' match of the year, in my opinion. I believe it's three and three quarter stars. We both marked out like crazy when Austin Aries hit the uh, heat seeking missile on Daisy Hayes. I went nuts for that. The lot of near falls, uh, rant on Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor needs to be more consistent with their storylines. They built the lyrics as a contender for the main event with all the video wires, even though it's kind of a joke. In August, and the show is in December, and it wouldn't be released on DVD till January. So obviously, if you had watched this, you probably even forgot that they were building up the lyrics in August, which makes it obviously seem to you that Aries is definitely going to win. They they should have been more consistent on that storyline, but. That's my only gripe. I think it's a pretty underrated show. We give it a 7.75. It has a comedy match. It has a women's match. It has a great opener. A uh, very, very excellent young guys match right here. And a good main event. It's everything that you kind of want in a Ring of Honor show. I just thought it could have been a little better. Uh, I, and I didn't expect much out of it, but it definitely exceeded expectations. Uh, so, yeah, 7.75 out of 10. I do recommend picking it up. Survival of the Fittest. Let's get quickly into this. Young Books House of Truth. 
I, I liked it a lot. I'm giving it three stars. That was a really good opener. But I think the House of Truth should have gone over. Young Bucks kind of already cemented their place. House of Truth hadn't done it yet. I think they needed to win more. Thus, Ralph was finished matches. I agree with everyone. They're all pretty mediocre, except Tyler Black and King, which I gave three stars. Roderick and Rhett, I gave two stars. P.D. Williams, Clark, I gave two, two and a half. Chris Hero, Kenny Omega, I gave two and a quarter. Those guys did not have any chemistry for whatever reason. Kevin Steele, Cool Command, I gave stars three quarter. Guys, Kevin Steele was hurt. I don't know if you all remember that. Kevin Steele was hurt. That's why they ended the match the way they did. After he did the drop kick throw up, he really hurt his knee badly. That's why they had to go home with the match. Uh, the Briscoes versus Aries and Davey. I didn't like it as much as everyone else. So we'll give it three and a quarter stars. I thought it was very, very good, but like not great. And as well, the first four, four and a quarter. Excellent, excellent, excellent match. I'm going to give this show like a 6.75 out of 10. 7 out of 10. I do think it is a little underrated. I don't think it's as bad as people say, but it's still not very good at all. There's two three star match, three three star matches and a four star match, so you're getting a lot, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. But you know the show could have been a lot better. So yeah, six point seven five out of ten, seven point seven five.